Hey everyone, QB King 77 here from acsyndicate.net, here to do a full review video on my Samsung Galaxy S3. I've been getting so many requests for this video. Uh, you also, this is actually a Sprint version of the Galaxy S3 in case you were wondering there. Uh, so I guess it's a US variant review. The main difference between the international version and the US variant is either the processor and the RAM. The international version has a quad-core processor and the US version has a dual-core processor. Uh, but the US version has two gigs of RAM as opposed to the international version having one gig of RAM. So you have a bit of a trade-off there. Uh, this is a sprint variant, so I guess it is a US variant review video. But you also have two color options with this device. You have marble white, which I have right here. Um, I have the white version of the Galaxy S3. You also have a pebble blue color if you're not a fan of the white. So you have two different color options, which is always nice having different options, of course. A little interested why they didn't include a black version, but I believe it had to do something with the Olympics being red, white, and blue because I believe a carrier is getting a red version as well. So that's just a guess, though, on my part. Um, I also wanted to talk about a couple things that uh, a lot of people have been asking me about and that would be in regards to the GPS signal on the phone and the radios on the device, the mobile signal. Um, in regards to GPS, I will be the first to admit past Samsung phones, some of them, not all of them, past some of the past Samsung phones have had very, very poor GPS results. They've always, some of them have had issues and whatnot, but uh, in regards to the Galaxy S3, I haven't had one single issue with GPS at all. Um, whether it's raining, completely cloudy, clear, sunny, it really didn't matter. I always got a lock within 10 seconds on my GPS, so um, you really don't have to worry about GPS. It's, it's working really well on this device. Uh, signal strength, it's okay. Um, I mean, it's nothing, I wouldn't say it's the best. I wouldn't say it's the worst, though. I mean, the Nexus S clearly had a terrible radio with with mobile signal and such, So, uh, but Samsung's definitely done better with that. The, the Nexus S is probably the worst device I've experienced with um, mobile signal, but the Galaxy S3 is fine. It's it's pretty standard. It's it's nothing great. It's nothing terrible. So it's, it's pretty standard signal-wise. Um, I would say Motorola, um, I would probably say the HTC Evo LTE's radio is a little bit better. The mobile signal radio is a little bit better, not by much. So they're they're pretty comparable in in that regards. But uh, but yeah, I just wanted to cover those things real quick. But let's go ahead and take a look at this device and get the full review going. All right, and here is the device itself, Samsung Galaxy S3 Sprint variant. As I said, marble white. As you can tell, this is a 16 gigabyte version of it. It comes in two, 32 gig and 16 gig of internal storage. So you have your choice there. There is a bit of a price difference. I believe it is on Sprint, $200 on contract for the 16 gig and 250 for the 32 gig. And it's around 600 bucks off contract for the 16 and I think 650 for the 32 gig. That's off contract. Of course, it varies by each carrier. I believe it's the same on AT&T and Verizon, but with T-Mobile, I think it's a little more. Um, so kind of keep that in mind. I believe T-Mobile is the only one that brought up the price just a little bit. Uh, but anyways, right away, you are greeted with that 4.8 inch HD Super AMOLED display. Uh, it is really amazing, Super AMOLED. I, I really love Super AMOLED displays. A lot of people have been worried about it being a pentile display. Another phone that I own that has a pentile display would be the Motorola Photon, and that is, you can definitely tell it's a pentile display when you are out in the sun. Usually when you're inside, it's you really can't notice it, but on the Galaxy S3, even when I'm in the sun, I really can't even notice that it is a pentile display. So if you're, if you're worried about that, don't be, because the dis display and screen is really amazing. Um, the colors are great. I've got a dead pixel test application. You can tell that the colors are really great. This would be the black. You'll see the screen looks off. That's what's great about Super AMOLED displays. When it shows black colors, it doesn't have uh, any light lit up at all. It's just completely off. Um, you've got your whites, your reds. You are, this is green. It doesn't look green on the camera, but it is definitely a full green. This is a full blue. I'm not exactly sure why it's not showing up in its true color on the camera. Maybe it will once I upload it, but we'll see. So just kind of wanted to show you guys the different colors on that screen, and the screen is great. 4.8 inches, it's not too big, especially because the uh, 
the space between the side and the screen isn't that large. Usually when it's larger, it makes the device feel clunky. I believe it's called the bezel, so um, it, it's not too large. I would prefer to see it thinner. It'd be awesome if they could make a phone that doesn't even have a, uh, a bezel. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. That, that's the word I've seen. So, uh, But anyway, uh, as I said, it has a 1.5 gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 dual core processor as opposed to the a quad core processor in the international version, but it does have two gigabytes of RAM, which probably makes up for the processing speed. So overall though, speed has been great. I really haven't had any lag issues, any reboots, any lockups. I mean, it's been a very uh, smooth and fluent device throughout my experience at the moment. Um, otherwise, other design features. Up at the top here, you've got your earpiece. Obviously, you have a, some sensors and a front-facing camera, a two megapixel, 1.9 megapixel, but two megapixel front-facing camera. Um, down at the bottom here, of course, you have actually a few buttons. Um, you have a menu button right here, a home button, which is actually a physical button, and you have a back button as well. So no recent running apps button, as you've seen on other ice cream sandwich devices. They actually got rid of that, but um, if you are missing that, all you have to do is press and hold on this home button and you've got your recent running apps uh, that does pop up. Obviously that's an ice cream sandwich feature. Um, but it is a little bit different having this uh, physical home button. I was a little skeptical at first, but I do kind of like it. It is nice to have a different feel on the phone as opposed to the capacitive buttons having it mix up. But there are times when I find myself just kind of tapping the physical button and forgetting uh, that I actually have to push it down and push it in. So it does take a little bit of while to get used to, but once you get used to it, it's really no big deal. Um, it's interesting that uh, they, they left it on for the US variants. Usually they get rid of it, but uh, I don't mind it at all. Obviously it's a personal preference if you like it or not, but as I said, I really don't mind it. Uh, otherwise, on the side, you only have uh, two volume rockers. You have a nice uh, curve color design here. You got a silver right here. Um, it is not metal. Someone actually asked me that. It's not metal. It's it's still plastic. It's pretty much all plastic all around, um, which is a typical Samsung build. A lot of people really don't like this about the Samsung builds, but I don't mind it at all. Uh, generally, I feel like since it's got this plastic feel, it's not going to break if I do drop it. I have actually dropped it once. Um, <laughs> my face was in horror as I saw it drop, but I, when it dropped, it really didn't leave any marks whatsoever. Um, it wasn't from that high up. It was only a few feet up. I was sitting on a table and accidentally knocked it off, but it didn't leave any marks whatsoever. It didn't obviously damage the screen, but uh, it does have that more plasticky feel, which some people really don't like um, with the build quality. I don't mind it at all. Again, it's another personal preference. On the other side though, you have a power button. And that would be it. So you've got your power button up at the top here. You have your headphone jack. Looks like you have a microphone up there as well. Down at the bottom, you have your charging port and another microphone right there. Uh, but other than that though, on the back, you have your eight megapixel camera. You have an LED flash and a speaker right there. That is actually a kind of a small speaker right there. Usually they put them down at the bottom here, but uh, they decided to put it up there by the camera this time, which is obviously no really big issue for me. Um, Design-wise though, I do really like it. Um, it looks very, very, uh, I guess the word would be sexy. It's, it's definitely a sexy device, especially in the white. I've never owned a white phone before, but I do really, um, I do really like it. The only thing I really don't like about the white is when you are in the dark, um, this, these colors, uh, not the colors, but uh, the capacitive buttons really light up and it, it's just kind of odd. Um, I, I don't know any other way to say it, but that's just only when you're in the dark. It's really, uh, it's not a huge deal. It's just different because it's it's really bright since it's a white color as well. That's really about it design-wise. Um, you do have that more plasticky feel, um, obviously, but uh, other than that, though, it's it's got a really nice design. I like the look of it a lot. I definitely like the curved design as opposed to the more square design that they had on the Galaxy S2 devices. You'll see right here, you've got a Galaxy S2 device right here. They've got more of a curved design as opposed to that square design. One more thing about the design in regards to Samsung devices, I love how they put the power button on the side here. That is where my thumb rests all the time anyways, so all I have to do is press that and it obviously turns the screen on. I love having the volume buttons right here and it's great having the charging port on the top or bottom. That's obviously a complete personal preference of mine, but I definitely prefer to have the charging port on the bottom and top as opposed to the sides. 
just uh, due to placement and I just like it a lot more and as the power button is the main thing I do like having it right there by my thumb I really don't like it at the top because you have to completely adjust your hand to press it and then adjust it back to hold it uh, normally so I really prefer to have it on the side which is uh, how Samsung usually does it so big shout out to Samsung for putting that power button there that's uh, my favorite obviously it could vary per your opinion all right, and another great thing about this device is that it has a removable battery and back cover. Um, some devices such as Motorola and HTC are going with the non-removable battery. You'll, you will see I have a 2100 milliamp hour battery in the back. It is a very large battery, actually larger than usual, I should say. Um, you also have your micro SD slot. I haven't put one in yet. Um, I do plan to very soon, but overall, uh, really great, has a removable battery in case your battery kind of dies out or you like to have an extended battery or you just like to have a spare battery in case yours dies, uh, which is always a plus. That was always the plus of Android devices, so I'm a little, uh, I, I really don't like it how some manufacturers are choosing to just kind of have the battery not removable, so really like how Samsung hasn't followed that crowd and uh, went with a removable battery uh, there. But let's go ahead and turn on the phone. All right, so when you turn on the screen, here would be the lock screen. The lock screen's awesome. Um, it has a ripple effect when you touch the screen. It has more of a water ripple effect, and one thing I do want to note is that it is it's great. I mean, it works perfect. It doesn't lag at all. Even when you press it a ton of times, it, it's very responsive. All you have to do is touch the screen and swipe away and it gets unlocked. You will also see you have uh, icons down at the bottom. These, these would be custom shortcuts, which you can customize. So any application you want, I have S Voice, Gmail, uh, messaging, and camera right there. Um, I'll get to that in a sec, how you can customize those, which you can do. All you have to do is tap on the application and swipe up and it goes straight into it uh, with with ease. I mean, it really doesn't lag whatsoever when opening applications or closing them. It's, it's really great. Um, Samsung has included a lot of nice uh, goodies into the ice cream sandwich platform. It is running Android 4.0.4 .4 ice cream sandwich. I can go to about phone. You will see Android 4.0.4. If you want a little hidden uh, hidden feature, quickly tap on the Android version and you will see you've got a nice little uh, ice cream sandwich droid. Press and hold on him and he gets bigger and bigger and there you have it. You got uh, a nice little hidden ice cream sandwich feature. Um, that Google likes to implement always so very cool there um, it just obviously a novelty feature but ice cream sandwich 4.0.4 .4, it does have the touch whiz overlay which Sam is the Samsung manufacturer overlay um, touch whiz has always been my favorite manufacturer overlay they have um, they have pretty much redone touch whiz with uh, ice cream sandwich there are a lot of new things that I do like there are some things I don't like as well uh, I personally prefer the vanilla look of Android, but there are features that I do prefer to have on my device that are included with TouchWiz. So it's kind of a give and take kind of thing. You're obviously gonna have things that you don't like. There's things you do like about your manufacturer overlay. So of course people have all their personal preferences, whether you like Sense 4.0, whether you like stock, whether you like TouchWiz, it's, it's obviously a personal thing. But anyways, you have these nice transition animations when you go between screens, which I do like to have. You can pinch to zoom on the launcher. You can obviously re, uh, re, remap your home screens however you like them. You can tap and quickly go into screens. You can do that with your app drawer as well. Pinch in, you've got all your uh, app lists there very easily on your home screens. You can tap on these dots and swipe across and it looks like you can quickly go between different pages, letting you know which page you're on, of course. There are a lot of widgets as well. You got a nice Flipboard, Media Hub. Um, you have your music widget. There's a lot. You can What you can do is actually go into your app drawer and tap on widgets up here and it shows them all for you. You can obviously go through and do whatever you would like. You have assistive light. I haven't tried this yet. I wanna see what it is. Assistive light and it turns on your LED light, which is nice to have. It's really great to have because it's kind of built into the OS. I'm used to it. Uh, I'm used to having to flash a custom ROM to get that built in. So you don't have to install a third-party application with that uh, assistive light, and it works very well on, off, on, off. Um, so that's a nice little feature there within TouchWiz. Uh, but otherwise, nice transition animation between opening up your app drawer and closing. It's very fluid, no lag whatsoever, no stuttering either. Going between your app drawers is great. You, you have uh, continuous scrolling, same with your home screen. You can go through as fast as you want and scroll through them. Um, I, I mean, it's, it's really, it's, 
it seems like it's very intensive, but the hardware with the device really keeps up with it a lot. So it's nice that they can implement these features and have the phone not lose any performance. Um, that's something I'm afraid of. But on the home screen, there's something I definitely don't like is the folder feature has been pretty much removed from this launcher. You can tap on, normally on Ice Cream Sandwich, you can tap on an app and drop it on another one and it creates a folder. With this launcher, you cannot do that. Uh, what you have to do to create a folder is either press and hold on the home screen and hit add to home screen and then you have to hit folder. So it's obviously a pain to do so. You can rename your folder of course to whatever you want. Uh, drop your apps inside that folder but of course it is kind of a pain having to do that when you can't just drop apps on one another. No idea why Samsung decided to not include that feature with their launcher. Uh, kind of a little gripe of mine. Other than that though, uh, up at the top you have a pretty nice look to it. You will see um, the theme to it. It has uh, obviously pretty much no ice cream sandwich blue up at the top with the battery icon, signal bars, anything like that. Uh, swipe on down. You'll see you have your Samsung Touch Wiz notification widgets, which I love having. That's something I did miss on my Galaxy Nexus was these quick panel widgets up there. Um, another Samsung, uh, not another sa ice cream sandwich feature is you can swipe away your notifications and get rid of certain ones that you don't want on there. Obviously, you can hit that clear button. Uh, but you will see they are extended controls as well. Normally, it's only got this page worth, but the, they added more. Um, you've got sync, airplane mode, power saving, mobile data, rotation, sound, GPS, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi. I find myself only using pretty much Wi-Fi, GPS, and sound. I don't really turn off mobile data and airplane. I do turn on airplane mode but usually I'll press and hold the home button to turn on airplane mode. You will see with the power options, you have silent mode, data network mode, airplane mode, restart and power off. I love having the restart button since I always do recommend rebooting your phone pretty much every so often, maybe once a day, just about. That's what I recommend doing. Uh, other than that though, in the app drawer, you do have quite a bit of bloatware. It's it's kind of crazy how much bloatware you have. This chat on application, which is a chat service. Flipboard, which I love. I love Flipboard, I'll get to that in a second. You have Game Hub, um, you have Keys Air, more services, Music Hub. Uh, you have the S Suggest, S Memo, which I like. S Memo is not bad. Um, Samsung apps. There's just kind of a lot of bloatware. There's no games bloatware. It's just pretty much all application bloatware, which I'm not a, too big a fan of. I obviously that is why I root my device um, so I can get rid of that bloatware, which is something that you can do, of course, if you choose to. It's actually quite easy. Uh, otherwise though, you have other nice features with this application. Within the messaging application, you can actually theme it. So if I want to compose a message, um, keyboard wise, it only includes one keyboard and that would be the Samsung keyboard. I installed the Ice Cream Sandwich keyboard from the market, from the Play Store, excuse me, but I'm not a big fan of the Samsung keyboard. I'm surprised it didn't include swipe. I was surprised until I found out that Samsung kind of implemented their own swipe. I'll show you that in a sec, 466453 and we're texting Google, so we will say, hey there. So you will see that they kind of included their own swipe. How are you? And I will send that. And you'll see that uh, it's got a nice icon there for your messaging. What you can do is press menu, sorry, go back to your messages, press menu, go to settings, and inside those settings, you have different styles. So you can go to bubble style, and you can you see you can customize. You have three, uh, you have a bunch of different options for your customizations with different colors, different uh, bubble styles. Of course, you can choose whichever one you like uh, the best, uh, whichever color, whichever icon you like best. Of, of course it's a personal preference, but it's really great that you can do that in-app customizations however you do like it. You can have a different background style as well, whether you want it dark, lighter, um, white, kind of checkerboard. So a bunch of different color options as well. Uh, you can use the volume keys to change the text size of uh, your messages. These are all little little Samsung features that they implemented. There's a ton more. I'll get to them in a sec, but just kind of wanted to show you guys that uh, cool bubble feature that you have in your within your messaging application. Another issue, though, I do have with messages when you send an MMS and it includes text or receive one that includes text, whether it's a little message, say, check out this picture. Um, it shows it as a slideshow, and when you see it as a slideshow, it's the picture picture is very small and the way that you can pinch zoom into it is you have to actually download the picture, put it to your gallery and then go inside your gallery and then once you view it then you can delete it. So it's kind of a pain if they include text within those messages which I'm not too sure uh, why it does that but it is kind of a bit of a pain there. 
Uh, a great feature about this phone though would be the uh, it having an SVDO radio, which would mean that you can actually make a call and use 3G data while on that call. So I'm about to show that. Uh, otherwise, theming of the the dialer I do like. It looks kind of like a Motorola Blur dialer. It, it reminds me of that. One thing I don't quite get is why they have a voicemail icon right there to call your voicemail, considering we do have visual voicemail, so I'm not sure why they include that. But let's make a call. Um, let's go ahead and call Sprint. Right away I'm gonna go home, I'm gonna go to my browser, and let's go ahead and load, I'll just refresh google.com. Um, I'll hit the refresh button. You'll see I'm on a call still, which you can hit end, speaker, or mute within the notification bar which is great you'll see google refreshed just fine 3g uh signal didn't go away you usually you'll see the icon go away but yes you can use 3g data while on uh, a call which is great one thing that you can't do while on a call though which is quite interesting is take a picture so let's go ahead and make another call um same call again and then I will go into my camera application, or at least try to. Camera, unable to start camera during call, which is kind of unfortunate, not too sure why they do do that, but uh, yeah, you can't do that. Uh, I do like being able to end calls while just pulling down the notification bar. That's another TouchWiz feature I do like. Another one I like is within the messaging application or your contacts application, you can swipe from the right to message someone or swipe from the left to call them. As you can tell, that's a great TouchWiz feature I love having, so uh, that's just something that's very nice and very handy as well. Uh, you have NFC, uh, which means you, it includes Google Wallet, which I believe gives you $10 right out of the box. Google Wallet, something you can swipe. Um, you can transfer files via other phones via NFC, but what they include is, I believe it's called S-Beam, which is kind of like uh, Samsung's version of Android Beam, which I believe only works between Galaxy S3 devices, so not exactly sure where they were planning on going with that. Otherwise, mobile networks, uh, go into network mode, you'll see you can choose CDMA or LTE CDMA. Uh, I don't have LTE CDMA selected, obviously because Sprint hasn't rolled out their LTE towers yet, which is kind of a downside to getting a Galaxy S3 or any other LTE enabled device on Sprint, is you can't take advantage of that 4G network just yet. Hopefully sometime soon this summer they do plan to roll everything out. Okay, and for now, that's it for part one of my review. I'm gonna be doing a separate part two video, so definitely check that out. I'll be going over the camera application, the music application, uh, talking about YouTube videos, pop-up video. You're definitely gonna wanna check out that pop-up video feature that the Samsung Galaxy S3 has. I'll uh, obviously show you that. So be sure to check out part two of my review. Be sure to subscribe as well. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+, and thanks for watching.